My God, I hate drugs. More developments in the investigation into the deadly bombings in Holo, Sulu. Four men seen on CCTV footage during the Holo bombings come forward to clear their names. Sulu Provincial Police Director, Senior Superintendent Pablo Labra confirmed this to reporters this afternoon. So who are these men tagged as persons of interest? What were they doing in the area at the time of the explosions? And how do they explain their suspicious actions? These questions we'll try to answer later as our senior correspondent David Santos brings us the latest live from Holo. So stay tuned for that. The defense and military officials saying it's possible that at least one of the twin explosions in Holo Sulu was a suicide bombing. That after President Duterte said the deadly blasts were the work of suicide bombers. Our Rex Romito has more. After President Duterte said the blast in Holosulu could be the handiwork of suicide bombers, defense and military officials are now saying the president could be correct. After they initially ruled out the possibility of suicide bombing hours after the blast. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana says the first blast might not be a case of suicide bombing after an unidentified woman left a bag in front of the church. Officials, however, say the second blast could be suicide bombing done by a Yemeni based on intelligence reports. I was uh, also convinced uh, immediately na baka suicide bombing yun. Ano? But pagka kasi suicide bombing na yan, somebody will uh, immediately claim na itong taong ito naging martyr. Wala pa naman tayo nakikita ng ganun eh. DNA tests are being conducted on the remains of victims to determine their nationalities. Lorenzana also says the bombing in Lamitan Basilan in July 31 last year was also a case of suicide bombing done by a Moroccan national. Lorenzana says around 40 foreign fighters are roaming in Mindanao based on their intelligence reports. There may be some efforts to educate these people to do uh, suicide bombing but uh, I don't think they are uh, succeeding. Kasi hindi pa naman ganun kaano yung mga Pilipino na mag-suicide bombing. Officials, however, say the public should not be alarmed by the possible presence of suicide bombers. They say they are intensifying their operations against the Abu Sayyaf in Sulu. Armed Forces Chief General Benjamin Madrigal, meanwhile, says they're still looking into the possible link between the blast in Holo and the grenade attack in Sambuanga City Tuesday night. Uh, yung mga peace spoilers are trying to put uh, religious undertone dito sa pangyayari. Kaya nga hinihingi natin na ting tingnan muna natin na magiging resulta ng investigation no? at uh, hindi ka agad tayo makapagbigay ng uh, conclusive uh, statement tungkol dyan. Senator Panfilo Lacson believes the blasts indicate a shortcoming on the part of defense and military officials. He says officials should improve intelligence gathering even as they have been aware of the plan to bomb Holo as early as August 2018. Anong ginawang uh, action noong dapat mag-implement noong uh, yung product na intelligence? Authorities are calling on the public to stay calm and remain vigilant against suspicious persons and activities. Rex Remitio, CNN, Philippines. Senators wanting to make sure the country's third telecommunications player will pass legal scrutiny under question now whether or not the Mindanao Islamic Telephone Company or Mislatel has a valid franchise. Senate Minority Leader Frank Dulon repeatedly pointing out that the firm's franchise in 1998 is deemed revoked because the company violated its terms. Mislatel insists otherwise. The chairperson of the Senate Public Services Committee, Senator Grace Poe, is looking into the possibility of, quote, curing the defects of, and questions on the legality of Ms. Hotel's franchise. Pinepresent ako, o ito, kung ito papayagan ng Senado, dahil sa tingin natin, emergency na kailangan natin ng servisyong ganyan, um, bigay natin, makaka-operate sila, pero pag kunisyon ng korte, biglang matitigil sila. Poe reminds Ms. Latell if the court nullifies its franchise, Ms. Latell will no longer recover the more than 25 billion peso performance bond it paid the government.
All right, we're going to go back uh, to the story in just a bit. In the meantime, let's move on. First, our top global story, China, saying it has opened what it calls a maritime rescue center in a reef of the disputed Sprathy Islands. Chinese state media Xinhua citing the country's transport ministry, which says the rescue center will, be, will better protect navigation and transport safety in the South China Sea. Xinhua adds two Chinese ships sent to the disputed waters rescued 16 people and two ships last year. Meantime, China insisting that its so-called Guam killer missile can hit moving ships in the South China Sea. The missile, given its name because of its long-range capabilities. Let's watch this. We go back to the Senate's plans to, quote, cure the franchise of the country's third telco. On the line, Senate Minority Leader Frank Rillon. Senator Rillon, good, e good evening, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, Priya. Thank you for having me. Well, sir, before anything else, what is it that you want to cure exactly in the franchise? Of oh, Ms. Latel. <laughs> it's just my duty to cure. Uh, the uh, franchise of Ms. Latel is uh, deemed revoked, ipso facto revoked, because it did not operate within one year from the grant of the CPCN and within three years from the time the franchise was granted. Under the terms of the, uh, uh, of the uh, franchise, uh, it is deemed ipso facto revoked. They also did not offer, offer uh, for public, um, uh, public there no public offering of at least 30 percent of their uh, outstanding capital in the stock market. So again, uh, there is ipso facto uh, is a violation which results in the revocation ex ipso facto of the franchise. So just to clarify, the, the franchise itself says from uh, from the issuance of franchise or commencement of operations. The, uh, the franchise must be operated within one year from the time a certificate of public convenience and safety is That's the very clear of the franchise. Well, that's very timely. Um, we're talking about the third Delco, and uh, the line's going bad. But I hope, Senator Drillon, you can still hear me. Um, is the line clear now? Senator Drillon? Senator Drillon? Yeah, we're all right. Uh, we're going to try and get uh, a clear line back to uh, Senator Frank Trelawney. I mean, this is Newsnight on CNN Philippines. Barely a month to go before the campaign for the midterm elections begins. Several candidates now trying to spread their message to voters without breaking election rules. Trisha Terada tells us more. Posters and tarpaulins sprout like mushroom, most with greetings and faces of those running for midterm election in May. The posters do not have the words vote or vote for. Election officials say, while it's clearly a case of premature campaigning, these are technically still allowed. But they also issue a warning these materials should be out on February 12th, the official start of campaign for senatorial candidates. And there will be no excuses. The most common excuse, the most common dodge is to say that, no, you know, someone else put that up or my supporters put that up. But here's the thing, if those materials are still up after election day, after the start of the campaign period, then it can be presumed that they are up because the candidate allowed them to remain up. Then it is clear that they are benefiting from their presence and that might be a way to hold them liable. Based on campaign rules and guidelines, campaign tarps and posters should not go beyond two feet by three feet. And these should only be placed in common posting areas identified by the election officer of a particular area. Every single bit of campaign propaganda right now is already or will automatically be in violation of campaign rules pagpasok ng February 12 for senatorial candidates, okay? All of that because they are too large and obviously they are not yet in common poster areas. As for commercials, senatorial candidates have a maximum of 120 minutes airtime per TV station and up to 180 minutes per radio station. Candidates for local posts are only allowed 60 to 90 minutes per station. Screening of movies pertaining to a candidate is also not allowed beginning February 12th. Comlex says malls may also be charged if they fail to follow the rule. Election offenses carry with them the penalties of fines and imprisonment. 
Senatorial candidates under a political party can spend a maximum of 183 million pesos, while independent candidates can spend up to 305 million pesos. The spending cap for local posts vary on population per city or municipality. Meanwhile, local candidates have until March 29 to fix their campaign materials. Comelec also has the power to take down promotional materials that do not follow campaign rules and regulations. Violators of campaign rules may be disqualified. Trisha Trada, CNN Philippines.